Welcome to the Cerritos Library, Universe of Learning Virtual Programs. I am Mr. Eric, and today we will talk about our solar system. Following our presentation, Ms. Rochelle will demonstrate two solar system projects that you can do from the comfort of your home. Now, we have this wonderful book available for checkout titled Discover Our Solar System by Colin Stewart, illustrated by Charlie Brandon King. Let's get started. All right, this is how it all began. Both space and time started in cataclysmic event 13.8 billion years ago. To begin, the new universe was filled only with energy. Over time, that energy was turned into atoms. After a few hundred million years, gravity drew some of the universe's atoms together to make the first stars. Those stars gather together into groups called galaxies. Astronomers believe there are two trillion galaxies in the universe, including ours a beautiful spiral galaxy called the Milky Way. Then about 4.6 billion years ago, a Gauss cloud collapsed within the Milky Way, setting off a chain of events that ignited the sun. However, not all the atoms made it into the sun. Some were left in a flat disk around it. That gravity slowly turned into the planets. Temperature in the early solar system were so high close to the sun that everything but rock and metal was boiled away. That explains why the inner four planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all small and solid. The Earth's water and atmosphere were added later through volcanic eruptions and asteroid impacts from space beyond a place called the ice line. Temperatures were a lot cooler. Some liquids and gases froze solid and gas gathered around them to make the giant planets. Jupiter and Saturn are gas giants. Uranus and Neptune are ice giants. Now, as we get into a brief discussion about the Sun, Please note that astronomers call the Sun a G2V yellow dwarf star. You could fit 1.3 million Earths inside the Sun. Dark blemishes are often seen on the Sun's surface. Astronomers call these sunspots. Sometimes our view of the Sun is blocked when the Moon moves directly in the way. Known as a total solar eclipse, it casts a shadow into the Earth. Also, boys and girls, please remember that you should never look directly at the Sun because it can damage your eyes. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun in our solar system, and also the smallest planet. The planet's core contains more iron than any other planet. Occasionally, we see Mercury move in front of the Sun in an event called a transit. The planet is so close to the Sun, feeling such extreme gravity, that it has probably never had a moon of its own. Instead, the only thing ever to orbit Mercury is the human-made messenger space probe sent by NASA to explore the planet between the years 2011 and 2015. The second planet in our solar system is Venus, named after the Roman goddess of love. Venus's day is longer than its year. It takes longer to spin on its axis than to orbit the sun. It is also the only planet to spin clockwise. Venus's closeness to Earth, along with its highly reflective clouds, makes it the brightest planet in the night sky, known both as the morning star and the evening star. Venus has an inner metallic core and it is sometimes called Earth's twin but the only similarity is size. Now we come back down to Earth. Our planet is the third planet from the Sun, and its surface is 71% covered in water. Our planet is the only known to host life. We have plenty of liquid water, a crucial ingredient for living things, because we sit in the perfect warm spot around the Sun. Astronomers call it the Goldilocks zone, after the porridge in the story. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. We experience changing seasons because the Earth's axis is tilted. It's summer when half of the planet is tilted towards the sun. Winter comes when we are tipped away. We have the gravity of the moon to thank for the angle of our axis staying the same. Otherwise, the seasons would change wildly. Let's get into a discussion about the moon for a bit. The moon is the brightest object in the night sky. Astronomers believe the moon was formed from the Earth. When our planet was still very young, it got hit by a planet the size of Mars. The calamitous collision sent a lot of debris flying into orbit around the Earth. Gravity collected it together and formed the moon. As the moon goes around the Earth, it waxes and wanes through a series of phases from new moon to a full moon and back again. Waxing means growing and waning means shrieking. If the moon is then half full, it is called gibbous. A total of 12 American astronauts walked on the moon between 1969 and 1972 as part of NASA's Apollo program. They planted flags, left footprints, collected moon rocks, and drove around in moon buggies. 
Mars is the fourth planet in our solar system and the most explored. We have sent many machines to orbit around, land on, and drive around it. NASA's rover, Opportunity, was designed to last 90 days and ended up exploring Mars for over 14 years. Mars is red because the iron in its rocks has turned to rust. The red planet is home to some of the most impressive features in the solar system. The mighty Olympus Mons volcano towers over 72,000 feet above the dry Martian surface, and a huge canyon system called the Veyes Marineris cuts almost a quarter of the way around the equator. The first person who will walk on Mars is probably alive today. In all likelihood, they are currently in school. This brings us to Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. It is the first of the gas giant planets. You can fit all other planets inside of Jupiter, the fifth planet from the Sun. Even through a small telescope, you'll see Jupiter's surface is split into different colored bands called equatorial belts. Hidden in these stripes are huge storms where winds can rage at 400 miles per hour. It is also noticeably fatter at the equator because it bulches outward as it spins. The biggest storm on Jupiter is called the giant red spot, although it is not as great as it used to be. At one point, you could fit four Earths inside. Now it is more like two and a half. Astronomers are still trying to figure out why it is shrinking. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun. You don't need a space probe to see Saturn for yourself. Even a small telescope would show the planet as a round yellow circle with rings appearing as a line running through the middle. You can even see Saturn in the night sky without a telescope, although not its rings. Saturn's famous rings may look solid, but they are actually made of individual ice chunks that are each about the size of a house. No one knows exactly where they came from, but gather all the pieces together and you'd have something as big as one of Saturn's moons. Maybe an old moon got smashed to bits. Saturn has some of the most impressive moons in the solar system. Its largest, Titan, is bigger than Mercury and is the only satellite in the solar system with a thick atmosphere. Space scientists landed the Hyogen's probe on its icy surface in January 2005. Uranus, the seventh planet in our solar system, orbits the Sun on its side. Its axis is tipped over by more than 90 degrees. That means that for half of Uranus' 84-year orbit, one pull is constantly in the dark. For the other 42 years, it is constantly lit up. Uranus was the first planet ever to be discovered. British astronomer William Herschel found Uranus using his telescope at home on March 13, 1781. Herschel originally called the planet George's Star, after King George III. Like all giant planets, Uranus has a ring system. It is made of dark particles even less than three feet across. Astronomers have spotted a total of 13 rings around Uranus. They are thought to be less than 600 million years old, and the first was discovered in 1977. Uranus has a distinctive light blue appearance, but it is not made of water. Instead, methane gas in its atmosphere absorbs a lot of the red light, hitting the planet. With the red light removed, the light it reflects toward us is mostly blue. Next, we have Neptune, the eighth planet from the Sun. Galileo first saw Neptune the years 1612 and 1613, but did not realize it was a planet. Neptune was predicted to exist by astronomers before they found it in 1846. They noticed Uranus speeding up and slowing down on its journey around the Sun and correctly guessed that it was because an eighth planet was pulling on it with its gravity. They used math to work out where it was. The furthest confirmed planet from the Sun, Neptune has the strongest winds in the solar system. They can blow over 1,200 miles per hour, around 17 times stronger than a hurricane on Earth. A huge storm known as the Great Dark Spot was seen in 1989, but by 1994 it had disappeared. It takes Neptune 165 years to make one lap around the Sun because it sits so far out. The Voyager 2 space probe took 12 years to make it all the way out there. Even light from the Sun takes four hours to make the journey. In comparison, it takes just over eight minutes for light from the Sun to reach Earth. What separates a planet from everything else orbiting the Sun? It has to be round and be the boss of its own gravitational orbit around the Sun. This brings us to Pluto. At one time labeled our ninth planet in the solar system, Pluto was found first in 1930. It is greatly affected by Neptune's gravity, which makes it not a planet. Astronomers invented a new term for objects like Pluto, dwarf planets. NASA's New Horizon probe was launched in 2006 and finally arrived at Pluto in 2015, where it took the first up-close images of this cold little world. It is continuing to journey further into the Kuiper Belt to explore more of the outer solar system.
there are four other similar objects that have been classified as dwarf planets. Ceres, Makemake, Aries, and Haumea. There are, almost certainly, more than five dwarf planets. Other objects orbiting the Sun, Sedna and Orcus, will probably be added to the list one day. However, we have to wait until we have a good enough telescope to prove they are round in shape. There are many other types of celestial bodies that travel throughout our solar system. Asteroids are the leftover building blocks from the formation of the rocky planets. Astronomers keep a close eye on asteroids because they can be dangerous. 55 million years ago, an asteroid the size of a city hit off the coast of Mexico, wiping out the dinosaurs and killing off more than 70% of all life on Earth. Today, we would see it coming. Comets also fly through the solar system and can be seen without a telescope from Earth. Comets are mountains of dry ice, also left over from the formation of the solar system. They patrol silently around the sun, partially breaking up as they get heated. This creates two tails pointing away from the inner solar system. We also have meteorites. What you call a small piece of space rock depends on where it is. In space, it is called a meteoroid. If it enters an atmosphere, it becomes a meteor. Only if it makes it to the ground, it is known as a meteorite. Thank you so much for exploring the solar system with us. The book, Discover Our Solar System and Other Titles, is available for checkout at the Cerritos Library. You can find this title in the Universe of Learning reading list by going to the library's website at www.cerritoslibrary.us. Now, please stay tuned because Miss Rochelle is going to demonstrate activities that you can work on from home using few simple supplies. Thank you and enjoy! Hello everyone, my name is Miss Rochelle and today we'll be creating two solar system projects. These projects will help you understand how far the planets are from the sun. Join me in the art studio and we'll get started. Our first project on the solar system is called Pocket Solar System. This project is a simple model that provides an overview of the approximate distances between the orbits of the planets and other regions of the solar system. The materials for this project are scissors, receipt paper, and a pen. If you don't have receipt paper, you can use computer paper and tape to make your own receipt paper. Glue and a PDF of the planets are optional. You can locate the PDF at cerritoslibrary.us under the What's New tab. Then click on Cerritos Library Universe of Learning Virtual Program Activity link. If you do not have receipt paper, what you can do is take an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, fold it, and then fold it again. Do you have quarters? You cut each one until you have this. Then what you do is you're going to tape end to end, like so. And you'll have to attach several strips until they reach from fingertip to fingertip when you hold it out. For the pocket solar system, you're going to cut out receipt paper that measures from the length of one fingertip to the other. It should be close to your body height. Once you have it cut out, you want to make sure that each end is even and straight. So to start off, we're going to label the top end sun. At the bottom, we're going to label it Pluto slash Kuiper Belt after the dwarf planet that is located in the Kuiper Belt. Next, we're going to take our paper. We're going to fold it in half. You're going to fold it, and then you're going to crease it. And you're going to unfold it and write the planet Uranus. After you do that, you're going to take it and fold it again. Then you're going to fold it one more time. You're going to crease it. Then when you unfold it, at the bottom crease closest to Pluto, you're going to write Neptune.
then at the crease closest to the sun. You're going to write Saturn. Okay, next we're going to fold the sun to Saturn's orbit. You're going to crease it and fold it and write Jupiter. Now we're going to take the sun and fold it to Jupiter's orbit. It. Crease it, unfold it, and write asteroid belt. Now we're going to take the sun and fold it to the asteroid belt. And here we're going to write Mars. Now we're going to take the sun and fold it to Mars orbit. And then we're going to fold it again. And when you unfold it, you should have three creases. On the first one, closest to the sun, you're going to write Mercury. The next is going to be Venus. And the third one is going to be Earth. And now your solar pocket system is complete. So then they kind of like roll it up. Our second project is a solar system model. The materials you will need are scissors, glue, and PDFs of the planets and the arms. You can locate these at cerritoslibrary.us under the What's New tab, then click on Cerritos Library Universe of Virtual Learning Programs Activity Link. Once you cut out your planets and the arms, you'll have this. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the sun Place it right here, and then we're going to have each planet going from closest to the sun to the furthest. Our first planet we're going to have is Mercury. What you're going to do is take the glue and glue it right there. Place it at the end of the arm. Then on the back of the sun, you're going to get the glue and then Glue it to the back in the middle of the sun, like so. Now we'll have our first planet attached to the sun. Next we'll have Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Now your solar system model is complete. Thank you for joining me in creating these solar system projects. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Bye-bye.